Audrey Gessme was one of the best running backs in college football last season, but could Notre Dame get even more production from the running backs in 2024? That's next. You are Locked On Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into Locked On Irish, your daily Notre Dame podcast. And today is Wednesday, July 3rd. So happy almost 4th of July. And thank you for getting your day started right here by making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Tyler Wojak. I graduated from Notre Dame in 2018, and now I'm a producer at Fox Sports. And you can watch the show on YouTube, or you can listen wherever you get your podcasts. If you are watching along on YouTube, please like the video below and subscribe to the channel. Or if you're listening to the podcast, please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe there as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. A quick reminder before we get going here, we got another mailbag episode coming your way tomorrow. Tomorrow. So don't forget to send in your questions if you want to be featured on the show. You can submit yours in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Locked On Irish or slide in my Instagram DMs at Locked On Irish Pod. All right, let's talk about the Notre Dame running backs because if you listen to yesterday's show, I told you that I'm going to be doing a deep dive into each position group on the Notre Dame roster uh, in the weeks leading up to fall camp and the start of the season, which is coming very soon. Fall camp starts at the end of this month on July 31st, and the season starts at the very end of August. So even though it kind of feels like we're pretty far away because there isn't a whole lot going on right now, I promise you every day we're inching a little bit closer and uh, the start of football is in the very near future. But today I want to focus on the Notre Dame running backs. Yesterday I talked a lot about the quarterbacks, what I expect out of Riley Leonard, the competition behind him between Steve Angeli, Kenny Minchie, and C.J. Carr. But today, the running backs and what they're capable of this season, I think think my expectations for this group are very high. And as I mentioned in the cold open, Audrey Kesme was unbelievable last year for the Irish. She was their bell cow back, even though before the season started, running backs coach Steele McCullough said it was going to be a five-headed monster. It became one monster, and it was Audrey Kesme. And you could make a serious argument that he did not get the ball enough last season particularly on the final drive against Ohio State. But I am not going to relive bad memories today. That's just not what I'm in for. So let's look at what Notre Dame has on the depth chart going into uh, the 2024 season. Jeremiah Love or Jadarian Price, either one of them could be running back one. I think right now Love probably has the slight edge as a true sophomore. Jadarian Price is also going to be a sophomore. He's going to be a redshirt sophomore because he missed his entire freshman season due to an Achilles injury. And then behind those two guys, you've got two true freshmen, Keedron Young out of Texas and then Aeneas Williams right behind him. Those two are going to be competing for that third running back, running back spot as well. And then to round out the group, you've got Devin Ford, who has had a very interesting career. Started off his career at Penn State. Had a really promising first couple seasons, then sort of got beat out by some younger guys, and then transferred to Notre Dame when it looked like he might not even play football again. Has a you know pretty decent season, and his uh, last year with the Irish mostly was a um, contributor on special teams. Then in the spring, they switched him over to safety because they're like, look, you're never really going to get the ball at running back. Your future in football is on special teams. Maybe if you learn how to tackle every single day in practice, you'll be even more of a threat on special teams. And then Notre Dame lost Jabron Payne, who was probably going to be their third running back this season, to a season-ending injury after he tore his ACL in the spring game. So then they're like, you know what, Devin Ford, we need five running backs. You're going back to running back this year. And that is where Notre Dame is at. And I, like I said, I think either Love or Jadarian Price could be the lead back. I think it's probably going to depend on the game and the situation. But then you've got two true freshmen right there. And then Devin Ford, who's a graduate senior. He's been around college football forever. I think he, br- I think he brings a good veteran presence to the room, especially considering there really aren't many veteran guys on this roster, unless you include um, Jerron Payne, even though he's going to be out this year for an injury. But my biggest takeaway about the running backs as we look ahead to this season is that I actually feel pretty confident that this group is actually going to be more productive this season than what the Notre Dame running backs were last season. If you look at the returning production, Jeremiah Love was the second leading rusher last year with 71 carries for 385 rush yards, also added 77 receiving yards, and then Jadarian Price is a little bit behind him. 47 carries, 272 rush yards, and three touchdowns. Jabron Payne was uh, fourth on the team, but he's going to be out this season. Then Devin Ford only had about eight carries. So Audrey Casime was carrying the bulk of the load. He uh, amounted for amounted to 55% 
of the carries between the running backs, 60% of the rush yards, and 75% of the rushing touchdowns, which is certainly a lot, but also he was the lead back, and as I said earlier, he was one of the best running backs in all of college football. So as great as SMA was, and has, as productive as he was for the Irish last season, really the year before that as well, I think that with Audrey Esme, you kind of knew what you were going to get. And Frankly, with Jared Parker as the offensive coordinator, they like to run Audrey Kesme just right in between the tackles over and over again on some occasions. They're like, why are you doing that? Nothing is really there. I think back to the Louisville game when they tried to just force feed him up the middle. I do think that Estime ended up getting hurt in that game as well, so he wasn't his normal self. But hey, sometimes it works, like when they gave him the ball on the last drive against Duke when they were actually trying to run out the clock and then Estime broke free for a touchdown. So I think with this year's group, you have a bunch of different options. You have Jeremiah Love, who brings a bunch of different things to the table. Love is very explosive. I think he has elite change of direction. He's a home run threat every single time he touches the ball. And I have been pretty impressed by his ability to run in between the tackles. He's a tough He's more tough of a runner than I thought. He had that one play in the jersey scrimmage in spring practice where he just ran right through Adon Schuler. Didn't really know that Jeremiah Love had that in his bag, and it really all started to come to light in that Ohio State game last season when he was a very big part of that game, which is still kind of crazy looking back at it, that in Notre Dame's biggest game of the entire regular season, they decided that was the game that Jeremiah Love was going to break out, and they really fed him the ball. He had a great game for the Irish. Uh, he was consistently getting first downs, and then I thought that would sort of be his uh, launching point for the rest of the season. He never really had a game quite like that the rest of the way, but still the fact that he did that against a very stout Ohio State defense gives you plenty of reasons to be excited about the future. And then there's Jadarian Price, who I think is also a home run threat, not quite to the extent that Jeremiah Love was, but Jadarian Price was responsible for one of the biggest, if not the biggest touchdowns last season when he broke free uh, for a kickoff return for a touchdown against USC, which all but sealed that game. And you saw his speed on display in that one. He's more of like a traditional one cut and go back, whereas Jeremiah Love is a little bit more shifty. Um, he can just basically just make space out of thin air if there are guys on him. He can do a little jump cut and all of a sudden he's got room. It kind of reminds me of Kyron Williams when he'd be going through the holes. He would just jump in between uh, wannabe tacklers and he'd just find a crease and get a few extra yards and then just somehow found a way to break so many tackles despite the fact that Kyron Williams is not that big of a back. Jeremiah Love is actually pretty uh, pretty big. He added 10 pounds since his uh, initial weight in spring. I believe he's listed at 196 now. He's 206. So all of these things are really good. Also, I want to mention, too, that they're both threats in the passing game, but they're different threats. Jeremiah Love could run in the slot. Like he could be a true slot receiver running routes with the wide receivers. He was actually getting some reps in spring practice with the rest of the wide receivers, and the coaching staff would not allow that to happen unless they had a ton of confidence in Jeremiah Love's ability as a running back. Like You don't want to be taking reps away as a running back just to try some stuff out at receiver unless you know, hey, he's good. He's got all the technique down, the fundamentals now. He can expand his game with the wide receivers. Jadarian Price was pretty good in the uh, screen game last year. I guess I'm going to have to bring up that last drive against Ohio State again. He came in for that screenplay that was blown up, but hey, if Blake Fisher blocks JT to him allow on that play, Jadarian Price catches that ball, maybe he scores a touchdown, and that game is over. But the fact that they had him in in that situation tells you the belief that Dylan McCullough has uh, in him to be a receiver out of the backfield as well. So they both bring different things to the table, and I think given Love's ability as a wide receiver, Notre Dame can run 21 personnel a lot more this season than they have in the past, where uh, you have two running backs on the field at the same time. Maybe they're both lined up in shotgun in the backfield, or maybe Jeremiah Love motions, and he ends up outside in the slot. But when you look at what this group can accomplish this season, think back to 2022 for a little bit. Now, it was a little bit different that season because Notre Dame had three main backs. They had a younger Audrey Kesame, they had Logan Diggs, and they also had Chris Tyree before Tyree switched to the wide receiver. Estimate led the way with 920 rushing yards. Logan Diggs wasn't far behind with 820, and then Chris Tyree had 444 yards. I expect to see a similar output in 2024 from Notre Dame's running backs, but I think that those uh, rushing yards and um, attempts that went to Chris Tyree as the third back, I think those are going to be dispersed between the top two guys, Love and Price. And before that season started, Let's think back there. So 2022, Jadarian Price was a mid-year enrollee true freshman. There were whispers that Jadarian Price was actually the most talented back out of that entire group. That includes Audrey Kesebe, Logan Diggs, and Chris Tyree. I think Dylan McCullough couldn't help himself but praise Jadarian Price's game every single time. 
it came up. Then he has that Achilles injury, wipes out his whole season. Last year he was recovering from that. So he hasn't really been that version of himself ever since he got on campus. But I think that going into this season, when he's had a full off season where he wasn't recovering from an injury, I think he could be poised to have a breakout year. And then you think about what Marcus Freeman has been saying about Jeremiah Love. Like Freeman has been on record saying that Love is going to be one of Notre Dame's breakout players this fall. He was the first player that came to mind along with Billy Shrouth, who is going to be blocking for him. So it's pretty convenient that those two are working hand-in-hand here. And last year, when Marcus Freeman was asked about a potential breakout player, he said Xavier Watts. I think that one worked out. (laughs) Okay. Xavier Watts went from, you know, like, oh, this is an interesting piece, converted wide receiver to safety. He could be a playmaker back there. He's making some plays, to Oh, the Bronco Nagurski Award winner for the nation's top defensive player. Should we expect Jeremiah Luff to win the Doak Walker Award just because of um, sort of the praise that Marcus Freeman has been giving him this offseason? Probably not. I think that's probably a stretch. But coaches don't really throw out compliments like that for nothing. This stuff matters. And I feel like the coaching staff has so much trust in these guys, even though they don't have a ton of real in-game experience, especially as the lead backs. And I think that tells you a lot about what those two guys can produce this season. And then behind them, I expect Keedron Young and Aeneas Williams to contribute as true freshman. Dylan McCall is certainly not afraid to play his young guys. He played Love and Price last year when Love was a true freshman. Price was a redshirt freshman. Like, those guys were taking carries away from Audrey Kesame, and those carries were deserved. So I think you're going to see that this year with Keedron Young and Aeneas Williams. And I think overall, this is really just a culmination of great recruiting by McCullough and the rest of the Notre Dame staff. They are loaded with talent, depth, and versatility in a way that we really haven't seen from this group in a while. But for as optimistic as I am about what this group can accomplish next season, I do have my concerns, particularly about doing the stuff that no running back really wants to do. I'll explain why right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch, and with great last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Whether you've been planning to go to a game for weeks, or if you're feeling spontaneous and want to hit up the nearby ballpark, Game Time is the perfect place for you. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase, and you can see the view from your seat on your phone before you buy. But my favorite thing about Game Time is the pricing shows your total cost up front, and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So as we look at the strengths and weaknesses of this running back room in twenty twenty four, I've already hit on a few of the strengths already. Versatility. Love and Price and even Keedron Young and Aeneas Williams, they all bring different things to the table and they're all going to have a chance to make plays this season. It's been well documented now that running backs coach Dylan McCullough has very specific roles for all of his backs. That could be this is the back that we throw the screen to, like Jadarian Price last year. It could be the short yardage back, which was Jabron Payne, pass protector, in between the tackles runner. Zone, duo, all these different things, all these different responsibilities that running backs have in a game, they're all clearly defined based on what Dylan McCullough perceives as these player strengths and weaknesses. So I think that versatility from the group as a whole is a definite strength. And I think that the home run threats in this group are really exciting. Jeremiah Love is so fast, has that breakaway speed where it sort of makes sense, right? Like when he makes a big play, you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. He just has that innate athleticism that most guys don't have. Like that one receiving touchdown that he had in the Sun Bowl, like that play was broken. It was dead. Jeremiah Love makes two jukes in a cut, and all of a sudden what was a dead play is now a touchdown. I mentioned Jadarian Price's kickoff return for a touchdown against USC. He also had a long run of 54 yards in the Sun Bowl as well. That's pretty impressive as well. And then I think Kedron Young, even though he's a big back, you watch his highlight tape against uh, some of the better programs in Texas. Like, it was unfair what he was doing to them. He would run in between the tackles, and then he'd just be gone. No one had a chance to catch him. And then Aeneas Williams, he's like one of the most productive high school backs ever. He rushed for over 4,000 yards and also added three thousand additional yards uh, as a receiver as well during his entire high school career. So every single one of these guys is capable of bursting off a long run or a long catch at any moment in the game. Another thing that I think is a big strength for this running back room, and it's not something that they were able to deal with last year, is that 
The defense is going to have to take into account the quarterback, Riley Leonard, in the run game. And that is going to lead to a lot more holes for the running backs to run through. So even though it's not necessarily a strength of the group in terms of their ability, it's going to be a strength based on what they are going to be facing in opposing defenses this year. I talked about it a lot yesterday. I think Riley Leonard is going to be a very important figure in the Notre Dame running game, not just as a scrambler, but also in designed runs. Mike Denbrock loves quarterback power, especially in short yarded situations. And Riley Leonard has a ton of experience running the read option, so he's going to make the right reads. It's not like last year when Notre Dame wanted to run the read option and Sam Hartman would just never keep it, even if it was completely there. And Sam Hartman had showed uh, a willingness to run in the past when he was the quarterback at Wake Forest. That was not the case last year, even though he did make some running plays, but I think that's going to be very different this season. So all of that comes together and leads to a lot of positives for the Notre Dame running backs. But I do have my concerns. There are some weaknesses in this group right now. I think the most glaring weakness to me is I don't know which back is going to be the most trusted back there to protect the passer. It's not a fun part of being a running back. Like, sometimes when I see running backs go out there and try to block edge rushers, especially in the NFL, like, any time a running back um, has to block Miles Garrett, like, that matchup is over. And honestly, I blame the offensive coordinator for putting that guy in that uh, position. But when we uh, talked about Kyron Williams' this game, we always brought up the fact that he was very, very good in pass protection. He had maybe the greatest single-game performance by any running back when it came to pass protection in that game against Clemson. Hell, even Bruce Feldman from The Athletic wrote an article about it because he literally did not miss a single block in that game, and it led to some huge plays, including that um, Avery Davis post-pass from Ian Book on the final drive of regulation, and that set up the game-tying touchdown to send the game into overtime. Like Ian Book is not able to make that uh, make that pass if it wasn't for Kyron Williams just absolutely sticking a dude in the pocket and allowing Ian Book to have a little bit more time to make the throw. It's not a fun part of the job, but it is very important. And right now, I don't think Jadarian Price is that good at protecting the passer. Neither is Jeremiah Love. And that was one of the best things about Jabron Payne. He was probably the best in pass pro of any of the running backs. And now he is not going to be around this year uh, because he's recovering from that torn ACL. That leads me to another question. Who is going to replace Jabron Payne as the short yardage back? I think it's going to be Riley Leonard, but also you don't want to be using your quarterback over and over again in these short yarded situations because then he is more susceptible to getting hurt. So who else is it going to be? It could just be Jadarian Price, maybe Jeremiah Love. They trust him more and more. But like, I feel like Jeremiah Love is more effective running through the tackles when the rest of the offense is split out wide and he has a little bit less guys in the box. Last year, Audrey Kessemi, sometimes it didn't matter how many guys he had in the box. He could just ball over them. They don't really have a back like that on the team right now. Kedron Young, even though he's a true freshman, is the biggest back on the roster. He's listed at 229 pounds, and I think that he's definitely worthy of getting his opportunity there as the short yardage back. But, you know, it, it's, it takes more than just being big. One of the reasons that Jabron Payne was so good at it is he was able to find creases and holes when it didn't seem like there was one to begin with, and that is a big reason why Dylan McCullough trusted him in those situations. But I do think the lack of of a true pass protector back there is going to hurt this team at times. Also, true freshman running backs, it's like the worst thing they're at because in high school, no top running backs have to protect the passer. They just get the ball all the time. That is something that they usually have to learn in college. So I don't really trust Kedron Young or Aeneas Williams to be able to do it either. So it's going to be an interesting... Um, thing for Dylan McCullough to have to figure out. I'm sure that one of these guys are going to step up. And I think that, you know, as you get older as a running back and you realize, hey, if I want to have a career in the NFL, I'm going to have to learn how to pass protect. And I think that guys become more willing as their career goes on. So maybe we see a big jump in Jadarian Price's ability uh, when it comes to protecting the quarterback in the backfield. So that is something that they need to get figured out, and it will be something to monitor really all season long because if Love goes out there and he starts getting work, they bring in Price, and it's just not really working, then they're going to have to modify their whole offense because other teams are going to catch on to that, and they're going to start being more aggressive and getting after the passer. And Notre Dame already has an inexperienced and a questionable offensive line. So I think all of that comes together and is a legitimate concern about this group. My last concern about the running backs is that they're pretty inexperienced as a whole. Like, as optimistic as I am about the jump that Jadarian Price can make going into next season and uh, Jeremiah Love, if one of those guys gets banged up, which is probably bound to happen, the running backs, these guys take some big hits from some big bodies, uh, especially between the tackles, they're probably going to miss a game here or there, or maybe they're going to have to uh, sit out a few series. Like, there just isn't a ton of experience to go around. And 
they might have to count on some true freshmen at different points in the season. And even though I'm really uh, high in the futures of Young and Williams, like if it's a you know big game against Florida State or Louisville and we're getting down into the thick of it at the end of the game, like does the coaching staff trust these guys to be in the right place at the right time and execute their jobs? Again, I'm not ruling it out. I'm just presenting it as a question. Notre Dame has had plenty of great backs come in and have great true freshman season. Remember Josh Adams? I think he scored in the first two times that he touched the ball in his college career and then ended up having a really good season for the Irish in 2015 when he had to come in for Tari and Folson, who missed the entire season due to a torn uh, ACL. So it's not unreasonable to think that these guys could come in as true freshmen and be big time contributors, but it is a legitimate concern to have before the season starts when we just haven't seen these guys play that much. Again, Keegan Young, Nias Williams, loaded with talent, not a ton of experience. Jadarian Price, Jeremiah Love, I think the ceiling is about as high as it gets with both of those guys, but they've never really been the lead backs in college football. So until we see it, I think it's fair to have some questions about what they can do as lead backs, but still very high about what this group can accomplish this season. But one of the most exciting aspects about this group is that Notre Dame has a chance to bring back every single one of their top backs next season. I'll break down the future of the running back room next. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here because I do want the focus to be on this upcoming season. But man, when I think about the future of this Notre Dame running back room, it's kind of scary, right? Because Jeremiah Love, with all of his ability, he has the chance to be like an all-time great if he continues on the trajectory that we expect. There's a reason why he was a top 50 player coming out of high school. There's a reason why Notre Dame had a battle with Texas A&M, Alabama, and big-time SEC schools to get him to come to South Bend. And honestly, when you think about Jeremiah Love's official visits, I believe he's at, I, I know he was at the Marshall game, and I think he was at the Stanford game as well in Marcus Freeman's first season as head coach. And Notre Dame lost both those games to two of the worst teams on their entire schedule, and yet they were still able to get him to commit and side with Notre Dame, which is just a truly incredible ac- accomplishment. And thank God they did because he is so talented. And he's only going into his sophomore season. Last season, he showed burst. This season, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And then you think next year, man, what is he going to be capable of as a running back and as a receiving threat? So there's plenty of reasons to be excited about Jeremiah Love. Jadarian Price could go pro after the season. It'll be his third year, even though he missed his entire freshman year. And I honestly would not rule it out because running back is a position where you need to get to the NFL as fast as possible. That's why pretty much throughout last season, I was like, yeah, Audrey Kesame is gone after this year. He's already proven everything he possibly can in college as a running back. And the more hits that those guys take at running back, the less their value or the, the more their value goes down. So if you prove that you can be a cable back in the NFL, Go. Don't wait around. Don't risk taking more hits. I know that some running backs don't abide by this. Like Blake Corum came back to Michigan. And hey, he won a national championship, so it certainly worked out for him. But I don't think he drastically improved his draft stock or anything like that. So Jadarian Price, if he has a big breakout season this season, if he rushes for over 1,000 yards, he could certainly go pro, which would obviously be a loss. But if Price goes pro, they have other young guys behind him. I've talked about Q Jr. Young. 229-pound true freshman. He was one of the best high school players in the state of Texas last year and the number four ranked running back in the class. If Notre Dame had not added Jeremiah Love in the class prior, Kedron Young would have been one of the highest ranked uh, running backs to commit to Notre Dame in a really long time. And then Aeneas Williams, who didn't quite have the recruiting pedigree that Young did. Like I said, he rushed for over 4,000 yards. He also had over 3,000 receiving yards in high school. St. Louis connection aside, he does really remind me of Kyron Williams in the way that he runs the ball, his size, his stature, his speed, all of that. He had a touchdown in the spring game. So I think that tells you that the coaching staff can trust him a little bit and that they believe in him um, this season and beyond. And then next year, Notre Dame is going to add two more running backs, four-star running back Justin Thurman and three-star Daniel Anderson. Neither one of these guys is ranked particularly high on the recruiting rankings. And to be honest with you, I'm a little surprised that Notre Dame was willing to take them so early. And what I mean by that is Justin Thurman and Daniel Anderson have been committed to Notre Dame for a long time. And when Notre Dame had uh, Keedron Young and Aeneas Williams, those guys committed very early on in the process. Aeneas Williams is the first running back. He was one of the first guys in the entire class to commit to Notre Dame. Then Notre Dame added Keedron Young a little bit later. And I remember doing a show um, after King Jung had committed, and I was like, one of the best parts about this is that Notre Dame is done recruiting running backs in that class. Now they can get a head start on the class of 2025 and maybe go after some really big fish, like some like top one or two running backs in the entire country. 
given the fact that they have so much time uh, and they can sort of exhaust all of their energy on going after the big fish. They didn't do that. As a matter of fact, they added Thurman and Anderson very early on in the process, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to have to trust Dylan McCall on this one, and I think he has done more than enough to earn that trust from me and you as well because he is one of the best running backs coach in the entire country, not just as a recruiter but as a developer of talent. When Audrey Kessman went to the NFL, he was just, he could not be more grateful for Dylan McCullough and all the work that McCullough did for him in just two years as his running backs coach. So I trust Dylan McCullough. I think he sees some things in these guys, Thurman Anderson, that I don't, and also the other recruiting sites don't as well. So even though I'm a little bit surprised by their ranking, I, I think that these two guys are going to be very good in college just based on Dylan McCullough's track record. But that does make me think, what's going to happen with Dylan McCullough? Like, what does Dylan's future look like? Dylan has been pretty open about the fact that he wants to be a head coach someday. He said that was a big reason why he went to Notre Dame, why he left the NFL, or excuse me, he left the NFL to coach at Indiana, and then now he went from Indiana to Notre Dame, and he said he has aspirations to become head coach. This is going to be his third year at Notre Dame. And even though McCullough was promoted from running backs coach to associate head coach and the running backs coach, he has bigger aspirations than that. It's fair to wonder if Dale McCullough is going to be around next year because I think he's going to have a ton of really good opportunities once these things happen. Like if Jeremiah Love and Jadarian Price break out and the Notre Dame running backs shine this season like we all expect and hope them to, Dale McCullough is going to be one of the hottest uh, names on the coaching carousel after the season. And, hey, that is just sort of what happens when you hire a really good staff. So I think that Dylan McCullough is going to have opportunities to be an offensive coordinator, maybe even a head coach, which would be a bit of a shock to me to go from running backs coach to head coach, uh, even though he has that AHC title. I wouldn't rule it out. I think he's very, very good. I think he's very well respected, and I think he has what it takes to be a head coach in college football. So if Dylan were to leave, I think that the running backs coaching position at Notre Dame would be a very attractive role, not just because of the amount of talent that is currently on the roster, but you also have a head coach in Marcus Freeman who really, really prioritizes the run game. He wants to run the ball more than most uh, modern head coaches these days. So um, I feel like no matter what happens with Dylan McCullough, the future of the running backs at Notre Dame is very, very bright. I don't expect these guys all leave once McCullough leaves or anything like that. And hey, maybe the best case scenario is that Dylan McCullough is like, you know what? I love being at Notre Dame. I'm pretty content being an associate head coach and the running backs coach. I've got all these studs in my room. I'm just going to stick around here, help out um, Mike Denbrock, calling the run plays and things like that. And then maybe sticks around at Notre Dame for a long time. I mean, they've got Denbrock and Al Golden locked up for years. I think that being able to retain your coaching staff every single year is a huge priority, even though every single top program in the country has to deal with some attrition every single year. And I think that's something that Notre Dame could be facing next year at the running back position. But like I said, if Dillon does leave, it's going to be a very coveted job, tons of talent in the room. And Marcus Freeman has shown he's pretty good at hiring running backs coach, uh, running back coaches. He's one for one. It's a thousand percent if it were a batting percentage. So uh, no matter what happens with him, I feel very good about the running back room. And I think we're going to see a really, really big season from this group this season in the young guys, uh, Jadarian Price and Jeremiah Love. It's going to be a ton of fun, man. I think these guys are going to be an absolute joy to watch. And I cannot wait for it to happen in just under two months. But that is going to do it for me today. Thanks again for making Lockdown Irish your first listener of the day. Last call for mailbag questions. If you want to be featured on tomorrow's show, if you've got them, send them my way in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Lockdown Irish or on Instagram at Lockdown Irish Pod. Also, one more thing I want to mention. If you're watching on YouTube, this is going to be the last show that I do in this studio because I moved. Um, I, I moved into a new apartment. I'm building a new setup there. Um, I... Fortunately, my roommates have stayed in the house. Uh, only me and one other guy moved out. So I've been able to come back, use my garage studio that I built, and I'm going to build something new. It might take me a little bit of time to get me to get it to where I want it to be, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to look cool. And uh, yeah, this I've done 259 episodes. Actually, no, because not every single episode was done out of this room, but damn near all of them were. So a lot of fun memories in this room, talking by myself in this closed up garage, but it's going to be the last one here. So next time you guys see me, I'll be in a different place. And then as time goes on, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited about it. Oh, also before you go, please subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast and I'll see you tomorrow.